Biology is the basis of male oppression of women. Men in general are physically stronger than women. And this has been the basis of male oppression of women. Our human history was one where might ruled. And so men ruled. And men made rules that benefited them, and they called those rules culture. We live in different times. We live in a time where might no longer rules. It is not necessarily the strongest person who gets to rule. And so we must remake the rules to benefit everyone. How do we do this? By changing mindsets. We can pass all the laws we want to, but if we do not change the mindsets of people, if we do not change how we think about things, nothing changes. And so this is how to change a mindset. Talk about it. Create stories. Create transparency. Until one day, that thing becomes ordinary. That thing becomes normal. So there's an example I like to use of the, of the show in the US called Will and Grace. Will and Grace was a show that showed gay people as ordinary and normal. And it did so much to combat homophobia in the United States, much more than any laws could have done. And so a question that I think is important to ask is, how do boys learn about sex? What do boys learn about sex? Many African cultures teach boys that the way to go about getting sex is through coercion, through deception, and sometimes through force. And it teaches girls that they can never admit to wanting sex because it means they are immoral and unworthy of marriage. Marriage, of course, being the ultimate prize for a woman. And I hope that the sarcasm with which I said that was not lost on anyone. What this results in is that both men and women have a hypocritical, distorted attitude to sex. And for women, this attitude is dangerous because it can lead to rape and murder. It is true that rape is about power and not about desire, but that this need for power and control manifests itself through sex speaks to the assumptions our cultures hold about sex. Rape is in some ways an extreme example of what our culture teaches about sex. Is there anywhere in our mainstream culture that female consent is celebrated? that female pleasure is celebrated, that female sexual agency is celebrated. A married woman in most parts of Africa today is seen as property because she will be told by her family and by her religious leaders that she must always submit to her husband. She must have sex with him even if she doesn't want to, which is a way of validating rape. What if we do better with sex education? What if we have open, honest, and uncomfortable conversations about sex? And the plainer the language, the better. What if sex education were not limited to biology? What if we didn't teach young people just about the egg and the sperm cell, but also about the society we live in, about social norms and about cultural assumptions, such as the cultural assumption around women and their bodies? Now, I think shame can be a useful thing. We should teach girls that they should be ashamed of themselves when they are dishonest, and when they tell lies, and when they steal. But they should never feel shame about their bodies. Biology is too often a source of shame for women, and biology should never be a source of shame. I remember growing up and being made to feel ashamed when I got my period. If your dress accidentally got stained, you felt terrible shame, as though periods were not natural things, as though somehow you had done something wrong. Periods happen specifically to girls, and to make it a shameful thing is to teach girls that something is wrong with their bodies. Periods should just be ordinary. They should be seen as normal, as normal as the sun shining and the rain falling and people sweating. But the shame does not stop with periods, we do not give girls the language to talk about their bodies. I know so many adult women today who know little about their bodies and who are ashamed of their bodies and who cannot talk about their bodies. 
The word for vagina in my language, Ibo, is considered very vulgar. So imagine this scenario. A little girl, innocent, helpless, is being sexually abused by her uncle. She's scared and confused. Sexual assault is difficult enough to talk about, even for an adult. But how will this little child talk about it when she doesn't even have the language? What will she say? How will she say it? We should give girls the language to be able to talk about their bodies. And most importantly, we must strip that language of shame. <laughs>